Today's video is a little different than usual. I rarely do tutorials, but I've been asked a couple times to show how I edit my photos, so even if this might only interest a small portion of my subscribers, I hope if you happen to be interested in my approach to editing and photography, I can provide some valuable information here. So, in this video, I'm going to cover the editing process of a photograph from last week's Misty Photography Session. The photograph I chose to show you is this one here. When it comes to the photos from last week, you should know that almost every photo was edited very similarly to how I edited this one, so in case you were hoping for a different shot from that session, just know that it was probably done the same, only the contrast settings usually vary. So after a photography session, I import all the raw photos and begin selecting. After the selection process, I usually don't edit the photos chronologically, instead I seem to choose my favourites and start with those, probably because they're the most fun. Most of the time, I already have a vision of how the edit should look and work towards that, but when not, I simply experiment. The most helpful tools for experimentation, just to find out which colour palette I'm going for for example, is the white balance and the split toning. Those two only can give your photo wildly different looks so that you can decide what style you're going for. So in this case, I knew I want the photo to have a cold and dramatic, but not overly dramatic look. I want it to feel calm, but also a little suspenseful. And also, I want it to have a certain cinematic quality, as if it were a still frame from a film. Of course, there is no one cinema look I'm speaking of, but I often edit photos in a more graphical way, which certainly doesn't look like a still from a film. Do you know what I mean? So, most times my first step is to crop the photo if I want to. For this photo, I want to heavily crop it to give it this wide cinemascope aspect ratio. Then, I usually move into the basic adjustments tab to begin editing contrast and colour. So, I'm pretty sure that Adobe has put a lot of thought into the layout of the functions because I mostly find myself just editing everything from top to bottom. For this photo, I set the white balance to 6500, which warms up the overall photo. I do this because I want to keep the wood and the grass in the background decently warm and add the cold atmosphere later in split toning. Then I want to darken the whole photo, but I won't be doing that here in the basic adjustments because I prefer to do that with the tone curve. A few things left to do here are the clarity, which I bring down to minus 25 on almost every photo I edit, the dehaze slider, which I like to reduce to minus 10 for a little bit of extra fog, and lastly I want to increase the saturation by a bit to strengthen the colours a little. Let's move on to the tone curve. This is where I want to do most of my tonal editing of the overall exposure and the contrast. For this photo, I made this curve. What's happening here is basically I'm pulling down the whites and highlights up here to darken the bright parts of the image. Then I set a point here to darken the shadows and midtones, which darkens the image strongly. I always try to be especially careful here because I want to have a lot of contrast by having dark shadows, but I don't want to overdo it because that often results in an over-edited and amateur look. An additional aspect when choosing the contrast in this case is of course the fog. By adding too much contrast you're going to lose the hazy look, which of course in this case I don't want to lose. Lastly, I'm slightly pulling up the point at the bottom which will brighten the blacks and the shadows just a little and add to the hazy fog look. Then we're still staying in the curves but switching over to the red curve. This curve is really helpful when editing colours and it's an easy way to add a certain look to your photo. What I do almost always, and this photo is no exception, is to pull the bottom point towards the middle a little. What this does is basically take out the reds in my shadows and instead add a greenish bluish colour, a pretty cold colour. And that's it with the tone curve, let's move on to the HSL settings. This is where I adjust my colours when they're not looking quite right. For this photo I've actually only done very little. I added some extra saturation to the oranges to give the wood and the grass some more colour. Next, it's time to add the general colour atmosphere of the photograph in split toning. What I did here was firstly add a lot of blue to the shadows to cool down the photo and give it this cold feeling. When choosing the hue, you can freestyle and just try out all sorts of colours, but I've kind of found my bunch of hues I always come back to. So I usually have my blue hue either on 225 or 230. 225 is quite a deep and pure blue, whereas the 230 hue just slightly leans towards the magenta side of blue, which I think is a beautiful colour, so I often choose that. For this photo, in a way, I chose both, 
I added the 230 blue in the shadows with the saturation set to 30, which is unusually high, but in this case adequate because we warmed up the photo at first with the white balance, so those counteract now. And then in the highlights, I chose the 225 blue and set the saturation only to 10, so that the highlights in the photo are cold but not overly blue. And now, the photo really has the atmospheric cold look I was hoping to achieve, so I think this is a decent example to show how powerful the split toning tool is. Then let's move on to the details tab where I always apply a little sharpening. I actually do the same here every time. I set the amount to 60 and the mask to 50 to not apply the sharpening on everything. Then I mostly skip the lens correction tab and only sometimes use the transformation tab to correct some lines, but that wasn't necessary for this photo. Then I move on to the effects where I add some grain to the photo, which I think adds some character to the photograph. The last tab is the calibration, which I do occasionally use for some initial color adjustments, but for this photo I didn't touch these. Now it's time to finish off the edit with some last little details. I wanted to cool down and darken the sky at the top of the photo, so I pulled a gradient filter from the top with the exposure set to minus 2 and the temperature set to minus 10. This helps to keep the focus on the foreground because a bright background can become a little distracting, so I wanted to just tone it down a bit. Then lastly, I used the brush tool to add just a little warmth to this part of the wood so that I can get some more of those orange wood colors in there. And that's it. This is how I went from this starting point to this ending point. And as mentioned, the rest of the photos from this session were done basically the same way. So let me summarize the key points I personally think were the most important for this edit. Firstly, the slightly counterintuitive approach of the color by warming up the image with the white balance but then cooling it down again in split turning. I don't know why this works for me, but it does and I guess that's what counts. And then one key editing step that was necessary here is of course the tone curve to set the tonal mood of the photograph. I hope I could clarify a few things for you and help you out with this editing breakdown. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a like, it helps to grow the channel, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll hopefully see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.